Hi, I'm Doug, your tech support representative here at Atlantic British. I want to show you a little innovative uh, part that we've just introduced. It is going to be labeled a YSB 108490K. What it is, is a repair kit for the battery, uh, battery cables on the DS2, where you have the two heavy cables going into one connector at the positive side of the battery. Now, up until now, your choices were either go to a local auto supply and get one of those cheap little lead connectors and then fool around with trying to get the second cable hooked up, which you never really get a good add-on connector to handle the type of power that 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 line, that cable, is supposed to use. So the other alternative is to buy the whole harness, which can be over $1,000 easily. So what we've done is we have come up with a kit that will allow you to properly hook up both the cables that go to the positive lead, go to a single connector with a, a good heavy connection, and then with a ridged, uh, a ridged hole in the connector itself, so you got a good positive lock on the positive post on the battery. So, this is a nice alternative, very heavy duty, and also done very well. The finish on it is really nice. It is marked where you can either put a negative or positive marker on it. In this case, we're going to be using it for both the positive cables, so we're going to go with the red, and we're going to show you how to install that in just a second. All right, so what we have here, this is a 2002 Discovery 2, 4 liter engine, we have the Bosch, battery, typical condition, we got green fuzz growing up all around the bottom of the positive connector, and what also happens is, you've started to get some green corrosion building up between the cable and this connector. Now, these are stamped from the factory, they insert the wire, they crimp it down, but you can get moisture and salt up in there, which will eventually cause these to corrode out. Happens quite often. So what we're going to do first, let's get some of that acid cleaned out of there. There's a number of different ways to do it. You can go to your local parts store and get some battery post cleaner. You spray this on, you let it sit for a minute, and it breaks down the, it breaks down the buildup of corrosion and we'll just wipe it off or you can hose it off. Some guys use the old fashioned method, Coca-Cola, seltzer, all that will break the acid down. This one has a wire tie holding the two cables together so we're gonna cut that out of there. And you really don't need a lot of tools to do this. You need a 13 millimeter wrench to take the nut off. It's always handy to have a set of water pump pliers so they can grab the terminal and turn it off. A nice set of, set of heavy cutters to cut those cables a uh, utility knife and you can strip the insulation off the outside and get back to clean copper and then the actual hex head wrench that you'll need to tighten up the bolts for the new tool that's going to hold all this together for you so we've let this sit for a little bit it's also probably a good idea if you don't normally work around this stuff to get yourself some nice heavy gloves to use so you really don't want to get the battery acid on your fingers my hands have been dealing with them for a number of years, so battery acid doesn't seem to bother them all that much. And actually, this is once we get the terminal off, this is a good opportunity. You should always keep the top of your battery clean. You can actually lose voltage through the dirt across the top of a battery, and you can actually prove that with a voltmeter by going just sticking one probe in the dirt and one on the positive lead, and you can actually pick up sometimes up to a volt, volt and a half. And that's just wasted power. Now we're going to wipe the whole thing down a little bit, just get some of that dirt off and whatnot. Now, being you're working with the positive side, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to disconnect the negative. And the reason being is, if by chance you happen to touch up against a grounded object while you're taking this nut off the positive connector, you're going to create quite a spark. To the point sometimes where if it's a tool or a wrench it'll actually weld itself in place and then you you've got a problem so save yourself a lot of grief disconnect the battery tuck that cable out of the way now we can safely take off the positive lead and a pair of water pumps give a little twist and grab comes right up and you can see that even though we've even used cleaner we still have corrosion build up underneath so we're going to give that a shot and let that sit while we while we take care of the 
the connection here. Okay, this we can take off after we cut the cable. Now, several different methods on this. I've seen all different types. You can use a set of bolt cutters. You could use a hacksaw. Uh, if you like power tools and you feel confident, you could actually take a cutoff saw with a fine blade tooth and cut right through that. And then what we're going to do is cut back through the insulation until we have clean copper because that's what we want to use to connect to that new tool. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut these and then we'll show you how to strip the wires. Alright, so we've cut through. We don't see any green corrosion on the ends there, so we actually don't have to cut back so far on the cables. So what I've done so far, you have wrapping around the two cables. And so what I've done with this one already is cut that down so it leaves enough wire exposed I can work with that. And then this one we're going to do the same. We're going to take a utility knife and just work our way around it. It doesn't take all that much to cut it. And you don't want to cut into the insulation. A little bit is fine, but you definitely don't want to cut it into the point where... You've gone as deep as the cable because the moisture and whatnot can get in there. It ends up causing corrosion, which will defeat the purpose of why we're doing this. All right, so I've cut about a half an inch back. I've cut a circle all the way around the outside of the insulation. And then just take the tip, go from about where your cut is to the outside, and you can peel the insulation off. And you see we got pretty clean copper there. I'll just take the knife and we'll scrape the outer layer because you're going to get a little bit of darkness on the copper it's just from age as long as we don't see any green corrosion we're okay all right so we got that one and we're just going to do the same to this about a half inch down pushing a little bit on the blade you'll feel when you make contact come around to the other side Okay, so that was the hard part. All right, so we have our cables cut, and in the instructions they tell you to leave about half of an inch. I went a little bit more. I got about almost three quarter of an inch there. Now, take note that the way this is designed is so that aesthetically everything looks very nice. The screws that lock these adapters onto the cables are going to be screwed from the bottom side. So keep that in mind. So we're going to pull the cables out from underneath the hose so we have better access. And this is a five millimeter hex. We back that out so we got some room. And so this is going to go like so, so that we don't see it when we attach it to the. And you can feel the wire touching the cable. So now we wait, back it out a little bit more so it seats. And we want to get about the right angle so we're not twisting the cable when we go to reattach it. And we're just going to run that bolt up through until we have real good solid. What it does is it has a slight point to it, so it spreads the cable inside, giving it a good positive lock. So it not only locks onto the cable, but pushes the cable out against the inside walls of the adapter. And we're just going to do the same with the other. Get that nut back the nut off. Slide that on until we feel it seat all the way in. Okay, about the same angle as the other one. So we sit square on the adapter piece when we attach to the battery. You're going to run these in right up tight so we have a good positive connection. 
No pun intended. There we go. And give them a good tug just to make sure they are on good and tight. We'll snake them back down underneath the water line. Now again, for aesthetics, we're not going to mount it like so because then you're going to see all the hardware in the bolts. So it's designed so that it's going to mount on that from up top. So we're going to need to put each one in from underneath. When you put the first one on, we're not going to tighten it up first thing. We're going to get the second one on so we have a little better maneuverability. And we'll roll that around until we feel the bolt drop into the threaded hole. And what's nice about it is all these hex heads are all the same size, all five millimeter. So then basically just uh, only need a couple tools to install this, the cutting tools to strip the insulation and then a five millimeter hex drive to essentially put it all together. And again we want to, once we got both started, we're going to make sure they're good and tight. Snug them up real good. Okay, and this is going to just drop right over the post. Slides right on. And again, five millimeter hex. And you just want to make sure you keep that terminal end square and even on there. We don't want it twisting up while we're tightening it down. Because the more square you're connected, the better your connection. Because essentially what partly partly what causes the corrosion is when you don't have a good connection on the positive side, you actually have minor arcing, and where that arcing occurs, you get corrosion and deterioration of the terminals. So you want to be on there square and tight. Alright, so at this point we've got our connection made. We have our two connectors on here. You can see this is a nice solid hookup. It's got a nice finish. This is something that's going to last considerably long period of time. You didn't have to buy a $1,400 harness to replace just the two ends. This is the best way to go. So, all we need to do now, we're just going to clean up our battery terminals. We want to make sure why you got them apart. Now is the best time to do it. You can pick up these little battery brushes anywhere. And you're just going to run that up inside. We'll clean that up a little bit. Having a clean battery makes a huge difference to how long your battery is going to last. There'll be no voltage loss across the top. We we'll clean up the two. Let's pop that on. Don't be alarmed if you see a tiny little spark when you first connect it. That's just the connection between all the modules. There's always a little bit of parasitic draw, so it's going to happen. Get that good and snug. And we give it a little wiggle, make sure that's on there good and tight. So We've done a repair on our battery cables. We've got a really good connection on both. And this is something, as I said, is gonna last for a considerably long period of time. Plus it's rather attractive looking. It's got a nice chrome finish to it. Really nice setup. So, when you're ready to do proper repair on your battery cables on your D2, just give a call to any of our knowledgeable salesmen at 1-800-533-2210. And thanks for watching.